Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting with Zach Baker. I'm Zach Baker. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Today we're going to be painting this popper, but we're not going to be painting it with the airbrush. We're going to be doing it with spray paint. And because it's going to be a lot easier than trying to use some spray paint for part of it, we're going to also be using some acrylic paint. Uh, let me show you what paints we've got. Neon yellow, green, a neon orange, and a little bit of red. We'll be doing some black acrylic paint on the bait. And then this bait is already white, so I'm not worried about doing a base coat of white on it. But if your blank or lure is not, I recommend doing a base coat of white. So I got some of that too, but I'm not going to be using it on this blank. It's also been a hot minute since I've plugged the Tackling the Dream group on Facebook. I think there's over six, 1,600 members, something like that. A bunch of awesome people on there, everyone showing their work and helping each other out. So if you guys are new to Airbrush and you've been doing it for a while, looking for a group to connect with some people, uh, go check that out. I'll have it linked below. If you guys enjoy this video and want to see more spray painting ones, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Let's not waste any more time. We'll go ahead and jump into painting this bait. Okay, first color we're gonna start off with is this neon yellow, and we're going to cover the entire bait in this color. Uh, make sure whenever you're spray painting stuff, one, don't do this in your house, and then two, uh, you wanna do really light sprays with it. You don't wanna sit there and just spray on super hard, and also make sure you shake these up the best that you can. Uh, the better that you, the, the more that you shake them, the better that they're going to work. Um, so this is the one we're gonna start off with. I picked all of these paints up at Walmart. I'm sure you can get them at Lowe's or Home Depot or any other store like that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with this one. And then I'm just gonna do real light coats with it. It does not take a whole lot. The fishing lure is a very small canvas, so it's not gonna take a whole lot to get this thing covered in paint. All right, what I'm gonna do real quick is hit this with the hairdryer. Uh, that way we can do another coat on it and get this neon yellow built up rather nicely. Okay, we're gonna do another quick coat of this. And that works for me. Going to hit with the hairdryer again really quick. Make sure that it's dry and we're gonna move on to this color, which is the neon orange. We're gonna do this on the belly of the bait. Again, I've shaken all these prior to uh, filming. Make sure you get your shaken up well. All right, and what I'm going to do is I want to spray this orange just on the belly of the bait. So I'm gonna flip it over. I don't like touching the bait with my fingers if I don't have to, uh, but I think for the spray paint, we'll be okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this bait up as straight as I can with where I'm going to be spraying that because I just want this on the belly. Again, really small canvas and the spray paint, it's hard to, at least for me, it's really hard to control how much paint's coming out compared to the airbrush. Uh, so whatever we end up with here is what we're going to get. I'm not extremely, I'm not extremely worried about it. And I'm just going straight, aiming for just getting this paint on the belly of the bait, not trying to go everywhere else. And I'm also going to move my other hand, that way it doesn't end up all covered in orange. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's extremely wet, so I'm gonna hit that with the hair dryer. We're gonna try to do another quick coat. All right, gonna do another quick coat. <laughs> it's so thick compared to the airbrush, but hey, we're getting it. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over again. And we're going to do the same thing on the back side of the bait, only this time we're going to be using our next color. It's called Jungle Green. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the back of it, because what I'm trying to do is get the bait to fade. So where I have orange belly, the neon yellow on the side, green back is what I'm basically going for. Uh, then we're gonna come back in with that black acrylic paint later. Okay, going just for the back. And we're going to, you guessed it, hit that with the hair dryer. I'm gonna get bold here and try to do a little bit more of this green up by the eyes, uh, just cause I think it looks a little funny how it is right now. I think that's all it's gonna need. Maybe a little more. Whew. It's really nerve wracking to <laughs> use the spray paint when I'm used to the airbrush. Uh, I think that's it as far as green goes. 
I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer really good, make sure it's nice and dry. And then we're gonna come back in with some acrylic paint. Uh, what we're gonna do is use that red up on the mouth of the bait here in a little bit, but I wanna make sure everything else is dry. I also might just spray some of the red uh, into a can or, or into a cap or a lid or something like that and just brush it on. Uh, it's and if if not then we could tape it off and go that way I'm gonna make sure this is dry and uh, grab our acrylic paint okay that works for me the acrylic paint I'm using is just one of those cheap 50 cent bottles of black it's jet black from Walmart and then I'm going to be using a paintbrush I got the paintbrush I think I'm happy with yep and we're just gonna go down the side of the bait so the other thing you could do is you could use like I would I would recommend a piece of plastic or something like that over cardstock. The spray paint sprays out so thick if you use cardstock it's going to make your paper bubble and warp and it's kind of a pain. So if you're going to use something besides the paintbrush, I'd recommend like a thin piece of plastic or some sort of like stencil material like that to do these. Uh, I'm decided to use the paintbrush because it works pretty good for me and we're just going to go for some nice little zigzags down the side of the bait. I'm kind of doing like a small S pattern. Or it's similar to that of an S, I guess I should say. I've also noticed when I'm looking at a lot of different fishing lures, a lot of their patterns are not very even. Like it seems like as far as store-bought lures go, it seems like one side of the bait has the pattern one way and then the other side is doesn't quite match it. So I know this one's not going to match and I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to try to bring this down a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat it on this side, which will be a backwards S. Not too bad. I'm gonna grab an even smaller paintbrush and go back in and touch up a couple of these spots. I definitely like the way that these look on this side. A little bit better than the other one, but uh, I don't think the fish are gonna care. Okay, that works for me. I'm really trying to decide if I want to do one more up in here. I don't, uh, I don't know. I might carry these up a little bit taller. Other thing you could do, I guess, is if you had a cardstock pattern, you kind of hold that up there and brush it on. Um, but I think this works for me. So I really like the way that particular, those two look. I might, after I get the eyes glued in and the camera's not between me and the bait, go in and try to make them match that one a little bit, where they're, they're a little bit thicker in the middle and then goes to a nice point. I might try to do that, but kind of hard to be up close to the bait when there's a camera between me and it. As far as eyes go, well wait, we're not ready for eyes yet. First we gotta do the red for the, uh, the mouth of it. And I think what I'm gonna do, grab some tape, and I'm gonna stick it to my shirt first, try to make some of the stickiness not quite as strong. And we're gonna put a little piece of tape right along the bottom there. Just to kind of block some of that spray paint. I'm just gonna go straight for the mouth. Make that with the hair dryer. And let's go for another quick pass. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this off. Ooh, it's a little crude. And this is one of those poppers that makes the splashes. So it's got the little holes there in the mouth, which actually kinda, I think looks pretty cool with the red showing through. Uh, let's dry this real quick and we're gonna put the eyes on. And actually I think instead of doing red eyes, it seems like most of the Fire Tiger patterns have yellow eyes. So that is what I'm going to do instead, as long as I have the correct size. Let's see. 
think. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. This fishing lure is ready for some clear coat. Uh, so I'm going to get that taken care of. We'll put some hooks on it, come back. I'm also going to see if I can get one of my smaller brushes and try to make some of these match that one a little bit more. So if it looks a little different uh, when we after I clear coat it, uh, that's why. But otherwise, I'm done with everything else on this bait. Uh, make sure also when you guys go to clear coat these that you make sure this paint's completely dry. Depending on whatever type of clear coat you're using, sometimes whatever the the oils or whatever's inside the spray paint cans most likely whatever's in that paint for the spray paint won't agree with whatever type of clear coat you're using unless it's like the spray clear coat uh, but make sure just make sure your paint's dry that way it doesn't crack and bubble everywhere on you and make a mess of your beautiful pattern i'm going to do those couple things and then we'll come back and take a look at what she looks like all finished up <laughs> 